Well, what have I got here? Well, it's no retina, that's for sure. Here we have a Super Iconta. Zeiss Icon Super Iconta. 6x6. Six six. Rangefinder camera. And this one was, this model was made between 35 and 38, I believe. This would be one of the, not one of the earliest examples, because there's a frame counter that goes up to number 11. And um, the first ones counted 12 exposures. But there was a problem. There was a problem with frames overlapping. So they fixed it by spreading them out a wee bit and only giving you 11 exposures. What else can we say about it? Well, this one is in fairly... Average condition, I'd say, there's a little bit of Zeiss bumps on there, and they are proper authentic Zeiss bumps because it's a proper authentic Zeiss icon camera. Anything else? Well, the film advance appears to work okay, that everything clicks along nicely there. There's a wee problem with the shutter, none of the slow speeds give us a slow speed. There's also a problem with the diaphragm, and I think if I close the camera, we have a look from the back, you might be able to see that the diaphragm isn't circular. One or more of those blades is displaced. And so it means that I'm going to have to have the shutter out and completely strip it down and service it to make a good going camera of this one. And how did I come by this one? Well, I got it on a local auction site, I think. Online auction site. And that was quite some time ago. I've never found the time to service it until now. Because now, of course, I'm supposedly retired and I've got all the time in the world. So this one, I'm going to start with by removing the shutter and we'll get into that. Right, so fortunate for me, the retaining ring in this camera, the shutter retaining ring is quite loose. So I'm using this lens spanner and hopefully this will unscrew easily. Now the tips I'm using on my lens spanner are not the flat blade type, they're the conical shape. And the reason I'm using those is, of course, that they're nice and round, the outside edge. And so it's less likely to scuff holes through the bellows. Because the bellows are very old. And being very old, they might tear. Right, well, I've got that started. I think I can prod that round the rest of the way with the tip of a pair of tweezers now. Let's see how this goes. There are plenty of scratches around the retaining ring where that the camera has been serviced on previous occasions I'd say or in this particular case since I bought this camera with the known problem of the diaphragm it's quite feasible that the last owner who described the fault had been in to have a look and decided it was too exciting for him to deal with and he'd leave it for someone else. So with that in mind of course I don't know what I'll find because I don't know whether the previous owner took the shutter out and then had second thoughts or whether he took the shutter out got into it and then had second thoughts. So what we got here we've got our shims at the back couple of thick card shims and a metal shim there. Well the rear group the rear group is only well it's not even finger tight 
as you can see. Tessar lens here, 75mm f2.8 I think, it was in an 80. 80, 8 centimetres, 80 millimetres. And you can see the state of the diaphragm there. And you can see that the opening is not exactly round. So, problems, problems, problems. However, I need to get into the shutter from the front. So it means I've got to remove all this clever focus stuff here. That's round at the infinity position at the moment. Now in theory, because I checked the range finder previously, it worked fine. In theory, if I lifted all this off, marked everything carefully and put it back in the correct place, everything will be good. Life will go on well and there'll be no struggles. However, I've been around the block a few times, that's... Uh, not necessarily the most likely outcome. But we'll start there. I'll remove this cover. And here I want my fine tweezers. Taking note of the screws what they look like and where they come from. We'll remove those two. Now there's two here at the top. I presume both come out. Start with a bigger screwdriver there. Lifting this off, let lift, it's not moving, what have I missed, not seeing anything. Right, have to have a little poke and prod at this. By rocking this backwards and forwards I can see that it seems to be stuck at about this point. I'll move that to a different focus position in case there's something catching that I'm not seeing. So I'm just moving that round to the little red indicator mark there. See if this will lift off now. Now I've got the same business. It's stuck right at this point. There's um, no obvious reason to me why that should be the case. Oh well, I'll better investigate. Well, it appears that this is trapped behind the ring on the front of the shutter. Now, there is a knurled edge there. I don't know whether that unscrews. There's a, there's a screw there. Yes, there's three screws. Well, it looks like I'm going to have to remove that uh, focus scale ring from around the centre of the lens there. Now there are certainly three small screws there. And you can only get at them when you're at the 
set at the close focus end of the scale really so so much of putting everything back in the infinity position Let's back that screw out slightly If there's a screw in there, it's lost its head. Now, sometimes these small screws are simply very short pointed screws that bite in to the lens itself. Other times they actually are dog point screws and drop into a fixed position. That screw there does not want to turn. It's lost half its... it's, ha, ha, it's only half the slots there. This is the same. The screws are damaged. Which suggests here, see if I can back them out regardless. Yeah, I'm gonna to have to find some more screws for this one or make some. Right, there's one screw out and it's 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 only half a screw really the heads split bring that back and see if I can get its mate out here yeah same deal There's no slot, so I've just got to push it around by the remains of the screw. And of course the third screw, both wings of the slot were, were missing. And that screw may or may not want to come loose. That I might need to deal with with a drill bit. I can sort of see that just the faint outline of the slot at the bottom of that hole. So I'm going to get a very pointy watchmaker's screwdriver and see if that'll allow me to get enough purchase turn that thing out. Well that's not working and I presume it's because the screw was done up nice and tight so tight that the uh, wings of the slot were sheared off. So I'm going to have to take a tiny drill bit and drill that screw out or at least drill a hole in the screw sufficient that I can jam a screwdriver in there and get it loose. Oh dear. Okay, so let's try this. I've got a carbide drill bit here. It's the smallest one I've got. These are very, very sharp. They are also very, very brittle. Now the screw is probably steel, not brass. But this drill bit will go through it. This is just a slow process.
if I can get a uh, even a quarter of a millimetre into the, that I can probably jam a screwdriver in there and use it to turn the, the screw out. Yeah, it's just gone tight. I've either run through to the edge of the hole or I've run through the screw. I'm going to need better glasses to find out. Well, it looks like I'm going to have to keep drilling. I can't get a screwdriver to engage in that. I haven't really made a deep enough hole in it to do anything useful. Definitely cutting. The fact that these screws are so problematic may explain why the camera was offered for sale. Somebody may have already been exploring this and discovered things were not good. Well this is going smoothly as these tasks go, but it's a bit tedious. I'll bring you back when I have some success. Well it looks like I drilled right through that screw. There's nothing left there. Oh it's just a tiny flake of metal, that's the end of the screw. And it was sitting in an, in an indentation, and uh, all I've got left there is the dog point off the screw, basically. Right, so let's lift this off. Now we can get into the shutter. So, front group should just unscrew. The uh, grease on that's a bit sticky, that's hardly surprising. This is the ring here that couples to the rangefinder. That couples to the slot in the focus scale ring. This rangefinder arrangement is held in place by three screws, I think. Was it four? Four screws. Now, the arrangement here is similar to that used on the Zeiss Icon Contessa 35. I'm just checking these screws as I take them off to make sure that they are identical. They are not. Two head fine threads.
three head fine threads wondered not. Okay, I think that range finder coupling will lift off. It does. Pop that to one side. We're getting near the shutter itself. Okay, the shutter release stuff here, what's this for? That came off there. Sat in there like that, I believe. Like that. Okay, let's take that off. I'll swap my eyes back, I've got the wrong visor on. If you're working on cameras and the like, one of these visors is very good. This is a uh, Donegan. Donegan visor, Opti visor. Come from the States. They are very, very good. You can get them with a variety of uh, powers of lenses. The one I normally use is this one, which I think is a 3. Can't see the number on it. I'm pretty sure that's the case. Okay, and the other one I was wearing was a 5, which is somewhat higher in magnification. Right, that central lens group here should unscrew. There are two points there to insert a tool into. I know without thinking about it that I can't get this in there because it's conical and the hole needs to be right by the edge in order to fit this in. So I'm going to try with a pair of tweezers first. See if it's loose enough to deal with that. And it ain't. So well, that ring has just come off the back, that was held in place by that spring there. And of course this lever has just fallen off the front for good measure. And that shim there sat over one of these positions. That's a little bit homemade looking that thing. Might need some investigation later. Alright. I've got to get this thing loose one way or another. I'm looking at the weapons at my disposal. This one doesn't open up widely enough. It may be a hose clamp job, I think. Now, a hose clamp is a very good way of getting things like this loose. So our options for unscrewing something like this, you can see I've put the front group back in place there. And I've put that back in place because I don't want to crush the centre group and find that I can no longer screw the front group in place. So what are our options for getting something like this off? Well, you could use a spanner like this that I'd made some years ago. You can see I've made them in various sizes of various materials. This is made out of uh, polypropylene. I've made some out of aluminium. And they work very well, but they're tedious to make. What I intend to do here is use a hose clip. And I'll put a wrap of leather around inside there and tighten the hose clip on here and I expect that I can spin that lens straight out of the shutter. Are there other alternative possibilities here? Yes. If you had a lens spanner that had different shaped tips they would need to be parallel on the outside and tapered off like that because these holes are right up close to the, uh, the threaded side there, then you could use a tool like that. I've got this tool, which used to be circlet pliers. And if that opened a little bit more, that would do the job. But it doesn't. Another possibility, and this one works quite well, you can take a file and cut a slot in the edge here and on the opposing side and then you can engage the blade and the blade only needs to be the edge of a uh, stainless rule and then you can use that to unscrew the lens. The disadvantage in doing that 
is that with this fine thread here you may damage that and it may make it awkward to get the front group screwed back in. So I'm going to use the hose clamp method this time around. Just screwing this lens in. The, this is our focus adjustment here of course. It's a bit gummy. That grease is dried out and gone hard. So I need to find a strip of leather and then I'll use this method. <laughs> 